Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, to talk about helical antennas. Helical antennas. If you've ever heard of a helical antenna, you might have wondered what it was if you didn't already know. Kind of self uh, descript descriptive term, but there's some very particular applications for it. You'll learn about this type of antenna and several other popular ham radio antennas in my book, Ham and Shortwave Radio, for the Electronics Hobbyist, due out in October of 2014. And I will provide a link to the Amazon.com page for this book in the description of this video so you can click on that and buy the book, pre-order the book when you're done watching this, if you're interested in helical antennas and here's an illustration figure 7-12 from that book <coughs> helical antennas with various parameters shown so that uh, it's pretty much self descriptive uh, all these different parameters a helical antenna is a high gain unidirectional antenna that transmits and receives radio waves with circular polarization meaning that the polarization of the wave of it as it comes off here goes round and round and round the sense of the polarization whether it looks like it's clockwise or counterclockwise as it comes at you depends on the way that this helix is wound the reflector should be at least eight tenths of a wavelength in diameter now seeing as these <coughs> antennas are typically used at VHF and UHF and especially above 432 megahertz in the UHF part of the spectrum the reflector diameter 70 centimeters uh, 8 tenths of a wavelength would only be about what 60 centimeters a little under a uh, little more than a half a meter so it would be entirely practical to design an antenna like this even for the 2 meter amateur radio band at 144 megahertz and uh, antennas of this sort have in fact been used on that band also on 222 and 432 and 1296 for moon bounce communications so the reflector should be at least eight tenths of a wavelength and diameter at the lowest operating frequency the radius should be approximately 0.17 wavelength at the center of the intended operating frequency range now, that, uh, what I've said implies that this antenna has a rather wide bandwidth uh, frequency range over which it will work, and that is quite true. That's one of the advantages of this type of an antenna. The radius should be approximately 0.17 wavelength at the center of the intended operating frequency range, and the longitudinal spacing should be about a quarter of a wavelength so actually this drawing is a little bit out of whack it's a little bit squished <coughs> the longitudinal spacing should be greater here or the radius smaller than what you see but this gives you the general gist uh, of the design for a helix antenna which should measure at least a full wavelength long at the lowest operating frequency that you plan to use so if it was two meters and means you'd want it to be a little over six feet long if it was 70 centimeters that would be uh, much more manageable on oh, less than three feet long but it should measure at least a full wavelength it can be longer than that uh, if you design an antenna optimally and operate it at the center of its intended frequency range you can get as much as 15 decibels of gain relative to a dipole that is 15 dbd this is a very highly directional antenna and you can connect multiple uh, helical antennas in what they call a bay or a matrix and phase them connect them all in phase for example four helical antennas at the corners of a square all in a single plane you can multiply that gain if you have two of them you'll add 3 dBD if you add four of if you have four of them you'll add 6 dBD so a, a a four helix bay might give you a little over 20 dBD of gain so that's a, that's a good choice of antenna for moon bounce communications particularly at uh, 
UHF frequencies, 432 megahertz is a very popular band for moon bounce. So that's what a a helical antenna looks like. The reflector provides a unidirectional uh, radiation in response. Otherwise, you would get a bidirectional radiation in response. And, of course, if you have this thing aimed up at the moon, you don't really have any use for propagating or trying to receive signals to and from the Earth itself. <laughs> it's underground. Uh, that, but, that, you know, that, that's a whole different deal. There have been, in fact, uh, ground current communications systems uh, made, and they have been used to communicate with submarines, for example. Uh, but that's a topic maybe for a whole nother video on a whole nother subject. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations, signing off for now, 73 and so long.